As far as my background is concerned, I learnt the piano and the violin like uh, a lot of people do. And I uh, still like Bach and Beethoven and Brahms and all the other composers. I still get a lot out of listening to them. Uh, but my view on that is that although Bach is very nice and superb, superb music, it's history. My type of music doesn't involve uh, melodies and tonal implications like the music of the past does, but it's more to the timbre of the of sounds. It's really just basically the sounds which I find interesting, uh, and I make it music by organising those sounds in a set pattern. Having got a few interesting sounds, weird sounds some people call them, but what I think are interesting sounds, I try and mould them into a structure. And I often found that the, the quality of the sounds and the sounds themselves dictate what the structure should be. Uh, an example of this is the gallery of cats. <laughs> The initial idea that really caught me for the gallery of cats was that was I was I was working in an art gallery at one time, and there was a meeting, and people were sort of talking a lot for about three hours, which was seemingly about nothing. Uh, I was at the studio the very same night, and I happened to stumble across a sound which didn't sound too dissimilar. It was sort of blah 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 sort of sound. I got that sound and I recorded it, and I recorded variations on that sound, and that was the initial idea for the gallery of cats. From then, I just took the sounds and tried to mould that particular sound along with some other sounds which I thought juxtaposed nicely with it into a piece. And the piece is really aggressive, and it's really uh, it says a lot. Uh, it's really gritty, you know, it's very, very tense. <laughs> It is a very, very satisfying feeling to see a piece go from its initial thought, the consolidation of the thought, the experimenting, until finally the piece is there. And I've done the piece all by myself and it's in performance. It's a very good feeling. It can only happen with tape music because with instrumental music, somebody else is a performer. And that goes back to the problem of notation and how you want the performer to perform and how loud is loud and how soft is soft and etc. <laughs> The 
problem was that between the first loud sound and the pair of the second sounds, there had to be a, a, a large gap. So I had the idea of, OK, we'll get the, the first sound and we'll put it through the reverberation unit of Sinti. Now, that was exactly the right idea, but the quality of the sound was so tinny. Obviously, just but through some electrical means, which is why this room is the answer. <laughs> finally get a, a sound which you know is right, which you know is right down here, as opposed to, to uh, something that you've thought up. The only way that a composer can really get to the grips of things is by trying things out over and over again. <laughs> I often find that as a composer, my ears are very, very highly tuned to, to just ordinary sounds. I can remember once at a friend's place, uh, which was in a back section, it was in the suburbs, and a all the houses around, there were about eight of them, all, all, they were all doing the lawns, and there were sounds of about eight lawnmowers all around. And as they went round different sides of the house, they came closer and further away. And it really gave a, a, a very, very nice effect. I tried to repeat it again on tape, but it didn't work quite as well. So in actual fact, there are often really good pieces in everyday existence if one just listens to them in the right way. Another step one can take uh, with this, and that is by putting the piano through the through electronic means, altering it electronically. By getting to the piano to speak in, this, in these different ways, one can get a whole myriad of sound timbres.
I was talking to a group of people one day, and most of them were really into it. They're all fine art students, and they really, really appreciated what I was trying to get into. However, there were a couple of others who sort of said, uh, will it ever be over Radio Avon? Do you ever visit your music on Radio Avon? And I suppose the answer is really no. I mean, I can't, can't see my type of music going on Radio Avon or any other radio merely because it's, it's inaccessible. I think the rest is up to the people who listen to it. To listen to it in the right way and not be affronted by a whole lot of weird sounds, but rather listen to it in a receptive way and looking for, for uh, what is trying to be put across. <laughs> 